Hey guys, and welcome to Motion Gaming. People keep asking me for more full game commentary videos, so I've dug out an aggressive muse win for you. Remember to give the video a like and check that you are subscribed with notifications on so you don't miss any of the upcoming Blood Hunt news. The match starts near Terrace, with my spawn being chosen at random. I wouldn't advise this particular spot to loot the Terrace Grooves, as there are better ones available nearby which will get you to the loot faster. Luckily I managed to grab some heals and loot the named location before the first enemy appears. If you want to know which weapons are the best, I would suggest you check out my in-depth gun guide where I go through the stats and performance of all the weapons, or check out the up-to-date spreadsheet, which I'll link below. Having hit the player for over 100 hit points, I decide to push fast, but place a projection as a safety net and a quick way back to the high ground if I needed it. After seeing that the Vandal was headed that way, I dash back to try and cut them off and almost take them out before they leap to safety. Knowing that they are down to only a few hit points of health, I continue to follow them down through my favourite mortal looting grounds. But this play was a slippery one, and every time I turned a corner, they were just heading out of sight again. I took to the roofs to attempt to keep up, but Vandal has the best movement abilities and is always a tough one to follow. Having seen how much distance they'd put between us already, I start to think about my ammo reserves and consumables. I would hate to finally catch them and then run out of ammo mid-fight. With another player turning up to the party, I decide to forget about the first one who'd surely left to loot some weapons, and focus on my newly acquired target, who I hoped would be an easier kill. I presume the shots that came from behind me were from the player I was searching for, so I tried to get closer and flank them on the right side while they couldn't see me. Another pre-placed projection in case I got in trouble, which I end up using to cut the player's path off again. A quick reload and the enemy flies past me down to the street level, only to disappear behind a corner. I was starting to think that I had found the first player that I was fighting earlier, as they managed to escape once more with almost zero hit points remaining. I was just about ready to give up chasing, but I found a few ammo stacks on my travels, so I knew that I could defend myself, and the urge to do anything but camp was stronger than my failure to get a single kill after a couple of minutes. After being shot from behind, I fired some warning shots to warn the enemy of the danger that they had encountered. This didn't seem to frighten them however, and they attempted to backstab me with Vanish. Having heard them get closer, I decided to push their previous position for some cover to use, but they had dropped down to street level and thought it best to hide behind a nearby menu to a Japanese restaurant instead of simply running around the corner. Needless to say, I won't be using that tactic in my next TikTok video. With another enemy incoming, I don't have the time to diabolize the down player, so I take them out from a safe distance and head to the rooftops to prepare for battle. I'm immediately pushed and managed to pop a quick mid-fight heal and regain height before tracking the player mid-leap to down the nearby. Looking at the skin, I presume this to be the escape artist from my previous encounters. I finish them off and move away from the area to heal up, just in case any other players wanted to join in. At this point, I have completely forgotten about the loot from my first kill, but with two good weapons and a decent amount of consumables, it's not the end of the world as I'm already prepared for my next fight. Perfect timing. Someone nearby was having an argument at one of the nearby entity checkpoints and would be far too distracted to see me approach, but with only one revolver shot remaining and a top up getting further and further away, I would have to get a lot closer for my assault rifle to be effective. Or that works too. This is a great example of why standing still for more than a few seconds and getting into a fight with the entity are both terrible ideas. So when fused together, it becomes what I like to call Error 404, brain not found. Having lost some time in the early stages chasing Houdini, the more difficult endgame was approaching rapidly. I needed to take some time to gather some blood resonance buffs to prepare for longer and more difficult fights, not to mention third parties. Having not diabolized any of my kills, I only had three available buff slots. So I decided to go for two Sanguine and a Phlegmatic to give me better passive healing and a shorter cooldown on my healing ability. I could have gone for a third Sanguine, but with potential enemies nearby, I decided to just get the best buffs from what was available in my surroundings, before moving on to find some more enemies to slay. With the next zone soon incoming, I grab my last buff and head into the graveyard to try and find some ammo for my revolver, or if I couldn't find any, replace it with literally anything else to at least have a secondary available. I noticed the main chest hadn't been opened, which is a good indication that the general area is unlooted because these chests contain the best loot spawns in each named location. I'm planning an in-depth chest location video for once the game officially launches, 
which will not only cover the location of each named location's chest, but will also show you the best spawn locations to get there before anyone else. So make sure you subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss it. Having found a purple sniper and plenty of ammo from the graveyard, I was set up for the rest of the match, and would only have to loot consumables from the enemies after each fight to keep myself topped up. This side of the map seemed rather quiet however, and having only pre-kills so far, I was getting an itch for combat. I continued to head over to my previously marked waypoint, knowing that at least one player would be nearby, but that more would probably turn up if a fight broke out in the area. I kept using my focus ability, as this would make any enemy stick out like a sore thumb. And soon enough, I find the first piece of evidence to point towards a hidden player nearby. A randomly placed gas bomb in the middle of the street. With no enemy in sight, I thought it better to get some cover and not stay out in the open for too long. This ended up being the right call, as I get attacked from one of the nearby buildings. Fortunately, I was already close to cover and didn't take too much damage. I heal up quickly as I expected to be pushed, but I had forgotten that the player was probably a saboteur. I would not give up their crouched position on the rooftop for anything in the world. I soon find their hiding spot on the very edge of the zone, and miss what should have been an easy headshot. But with their poor escape route giving me a perfect angle on them, I attempt two more shots before a third party enters the fight. I immediately push the rooftop to catch them by surprise before they were able to finish off the poor saboteur. But to my surprise, there were nowhere to be seen. It just wasn't my lucky day. Having finally spotted them, I push before they get away, and hear another saboteur bomb activate. That would explain why I couldn't see anyone. I try to play around their gas bomb, poking from different angles and trying to force them away from the high ground. I even tried pulling off a smart play by covering two angles at once with my projection dash. But even that failed as they immediately popped the vanish as soon as I got in close. I start chasing the invisible enemy, but get shot from behind, and having lost track of this player, I decide to go finish the previous saboteur before moving into the next zone. An armor plate and my passive heals quickly get me back to full hit points, as I finish off this player who seemed to have no idea where they were being shot from. No time for a die-up, I need to find that other saboteur player before they wander into trouble elsewhere. As predicted, the third party is never far, but this one seemed insistent on not engaging the fight and running away instead. I push in aggressively with the sniper, which probably isn't the best idea, but those headshots are so satisfying. I end up swapping to the assault rifle so I can spray and hope that enough shots go in the right direction. But instead, I end up shooting a mortal, which was probably the worst possible thing to do at this stage of the game. With the enemy only a few shots from death, I get interrupted by another nearby player, and they end up stealing the kill after all of my hard work. I soon discover, however, that they weren't the only player to have appeared out of nowhere, and that there were in fact multiple fights going across the nearby rooftops, and I was a giant moving target in the middle of this mini warzone. Having turned up a split second too late, I am only able to pick up one kill before having to keep moving. The last thing I want to do is stay in the same spot while being revealed to the remaining players. I leave the other down player alive as I wouldn't have gained anything from finishing them, and it could always end up being a kill I could pick up later on. I decide to drop down to street level while my blood hunt is still going on. This would avoid people from being able to shoot me from too far away, and give me the option to regain height discreetly once my timer had finished. Having missed out on a bunch of kills so far, and only 5 players remaining, I was about to go on a killing spree and take out every one of them. My first job however was to find them, as somehow we had gone from all out warzone to playing hide and seek within the 20 seconds of my plot hunt. I soon found my first target, who I presumed to be someone who had been chasing me since I was revealed on the map, and had lost track of me along the way. The satisfying noise of a headshot meant that I could push the shiny 160 floating above their position and take them out without too much difficulty. With the player downed and both the third party and myself being outside of the next zone, we both attempted to do as much damage as possible before having to move away from the gas. I hit a solid shot and a decent spray considering the distance, but it wasn't quite enough to down them. I see them run for the zone behind the roof and pull off a great mid-air shot that finishes them off before they hit the ground. I quick check to make sure that the first player I downed had not managed to escape from the gas, and time to finish the second before moving into the next zone. There were now only three targets remaining, 
and with the path to the zone littered with cover, I was confident to get there easily. A quick armor up and weapon check to prepare for the next fight, and I was ready. I checked some of the power positions, just in case I could force them down before getting too close, as fighting underneath can be difficult. But these spots weren't part of the next zone, and no one was camping them, so I kept pushing forwards. I pushed to the rooftops for better visibility, but a siren had been waiting for me. I narrowly avoid their flash by only a few meters, and I managed to dash to the opposing building without taking too much damage. I reposition for a better escape route, and see them pushing across in my building. I managed to hit another mid-air sniper shot, which evened the fight well, but my tracking with the assault rifle is what ends up taking them out. I end up executing the player out of habit, but a melee finish would have been a safer option in case one of the last two players were nearby. I reload my weapons before pushing into unknown territory and put some distance from the gas before using an armor plate, so as not to get stuck. Having not been pushed from either of the remaining enemies, I presumed that I was not against highly skilled players, which was confirmed to me moments later with one of them somehow breaking the masquerade nearby. My plan was to take out the player before we could get close to the next zone, allowing me to have a 1v1 for the win and not worry about multiple enemies at once. Fortunately, I could see their every move and they had the gas pushing them forwards, so it wouldn't be too difficult and my main worry was the last player denying me access to the last zone in a similar way. With confirmation of the last player's location and the blood-hunted enemy choosing a weird hiding spot to escape the raining bullets, I pushed down to finish off my kill and tried to get to the final zone without taking too much damage. My dash was a safety net in case I had underestimated the player, but wasn't needed in the end, and a quick dive was possible with the safety of the surrounding cover. It was now a 1v1 for the victory, and as you can probably guess with the fact that I uploaded this game, it can only end one way. But getting into the final zone with an enemy gatekeeping the access from the high ground would not be an easy thing to achieve, especially as they knew my rough location. I only had a few seconds to figure out how I would get there before the gas would force me to make a move, and with the enemy sending out their bats to reveal my position, I had to think of something quick. I popped a gas neutralizer to gain me an extra few seconds as I tried to get a cheeky sniper shot off. This would force the enemy to either hide and heal, which would give me time to push, or try and defend with a disadvantage in hit points. Unfortunately, they saw right through my plan and didn't pop their head out, even with the gas now completely concealing my position. With the added cover from the gas and time running out, I make an aggressive push for the high ground directly next to the enemy. We both deal a butt ton of damage and I manage to use my heal before they vanish off to do the same. With my passive heals and a syringe, I knew that I had the advantage, so I rotate around the zone and grab some nearby high ground to get a better view of where the enemy is hiding. They soon popped out of their head for a split second before vanishing and reappearing right beside me, only to be shot down by my trusty assault rifle. Thanks for sticking around for the whole match. Write donut in the comments to let me know that you saw the whole video, and make sure you subscribe for more Blood Hunt videos.